Hello everyone. Hello Peter. Thank you for having me. And uh, today I have uh, this great opportunity to speak with some of you. And we have a lot of questions here uh, to be discussed and answered. And then thank you all for this. So the first question was how it's all begin. Uh, so I guess it's all started in uh, London where I went to study uh, to learn English to do my master degree in business management and that's the place where I started to practice Al Islam and I went to many places of worship and I got introduced to this beautiful uh, substance known as Oud. At first I did not like it at all. I was actually disgusted the time when I smelt it and then it caused this huge interest. Like how come it's so expensive, it's so crazed, yet it smells disgusting, it smells bad. So I start, started to smell it again and again and breathe deeply, try to realize and understand what's going on until I got hooked, completely hooked. And since that day, I love Oud and I started to discover different others, different scents and that's how it all began in London. Then I met my beautiful friend, one of my uh, teachers, uh, Sultan Pasha. And together we started to discover more and more different perfumes, different atars and different blends and started to discover a lot of different materials and that's when I did my first attempts in blending perfumes. Then I went to Thailand where my dream came true and I started to distill agarwood oil along with my friend Mitri. So we distilled a lot of oils and it was all about training your nose and really looking how slight changes in the distillation process can hugely affect the smell of the final agarwood oil. So it was an amazing experience. Uh, then I went to Borneo where I conducted a lot of distillations myself and that's where I believe the idea of launch, launching my perfume brand came to mind. And at that time I ordered quite a few of samples of famous perfumes in order just to experience what is in the market, what people like, what people praise and what is the perfume business and what are the perfumes that mention oud, musk, amber in its titles and in its fragrance notes, in its fragrance pyramid. Then I smelled those famous and very expensive perfumes. I'm not talking about designer fragrances, I'm talking about very exclusive luxury, niche type of perfumes and I was expecting uh, to be blown away in accordance to its very high price and what I smelled really shocked me and I was offended to be honest because the perfumes with the Oud name in the title, with the Amber name in the title, with the Musk name in its titles they had nothing to do with this rare and amazing, precious ingredients. So then I was like, okay, I need to do it. I need to make a perfume that capture deer musk the way it is. I need to show people what is deer musk. I need to make a perfume that shows people what is the true Zen, the real, authentic old oil. I need to make a perfume that shows people what is rose, how the real rose oil smells like, how it can beautifully flow into the 
other ingredients like oak moss, amber, and sandalwood. What is the real sandalwood? How beautiful it is. And that's the way I launched my first collection. Because I was really surprised and shocked and even offended by the fact that all these huge names in the perfume world, these niche luxury houses, they charge people so much that most likely the customers who buy it, they expect to experience authentic ingredients, authentic musk, authentic oud, authentic sandal, rose and amber. But I found nothing like that in those samples that I purchased. So it was really driving me and I was like, I must do it and I must show the world how the deer musk smells, <laughs> how the oud smells and what is the real rose and sandal and all these beautiful precious materials. The second question was regarding the challenges that I face as a perfumer and as a distiller. So the challenges are quite a lot and they all remain behind the stage. As a perfumer I faced a lot of challenges at the beginning with the packaging, with the bottling, labels, caps, stones and all the things that I need in order to present you this beautiful product, perfume. It took me a lot of time, a lot of research to find those places where I can source a small quantities of the boxes, the bottles, the caps and all that is needed in order to present this beautiful perfume the way I want it. So then it was very hard to handle each stage by my own self. Apart from distilling the materials, some of the materials, blending them, making the perfume, filtering, bottling, I also had to pack it all by myself. And it was very tough and I didn't find much strength and time to do it when you want to be blending day and night but you still have to pack orders, send them by yourself. It was very challenging. And now thank God my entire family helping me with my beautiful perfume endeavors. So it's really a blessing that it truly became like a family business. The challenges as a distiller, as you might notice, I not distill much agarwood lately and it's obviously for a good reason. I find it very very hard to find suitable materials for distillation, especially affordable materials that are high enough, the quality level is high enough for me to get a beautiful wood oil. The materials that we used to source back in the day when we started distilling in Thailand three or four years ago cost us let's say 500, 1000, 2000 dollar per kilo exactly the same great raw materials today are double or even triple in price what it means is that to produce a single bottle of old oil you have to pay twice or even triple price and then you have to obviously sell it for more and many people they not understand, they not realize, they not appreciate this so it's very hard to make old oil and to be able to sell it to recover some of your cost and that's basically one of the main reasons why we are not doing much of our own distillations at the moment. We will hope that we will continue to produce high quality agarwood oil but definitely it will be more challenging and definitely it will cost more. The next question that Peter presented was regarding the inspiration for each of the new collection of Arich Ladoria that we produce, that we present to you. 
and how I select the ingredients. So as you might know that the God Almighty, He inspire people and He also give provision to people and often it comes from the places that you never expect. So the inspiration might come from a person like my beautiful wife might inspire me to do a perfume or for instance I might smell a beautiful old oil that has so many facets and it's so rich and deep and complex and it starts reminding me different materials different ways how I want to in capture and focus on different different aspects of this old oil and how do I want to how I want to, to capture this old oil in the form of a perfume so old oil might inspire me people might inspire often a places and different beautiful locations might inspire me and then I start to visualize the future smell, the future composition, the way I want to see it, the way I want it to smell, the, the way I want it to flow from middle to base and the top notes and all of that. So it's really amazing how God Almighty inspires people and often it comes from really unexpected sources. Another question is a very hot topic. It's a question regarding animal derived materials such as ambergris, civet, civet paste, coffee, civet that I extracted for one of my uh, latest perfumes, deer musk. So let's talk about civet for instance. Arish Ledore never used civet paste which is known to be derived from a civet cat and we believe that it never can be done ethically. There are farms in different parts of the world where they keep the cats and then they take the paste out of their glands and it's caused a lot of harm to the animal. For this reason, we not use civet paste in our perfumes. On the other hand, we have civet coffee, which is also produced by the civet cat. However, we met the farmer of this particular coffee that I, I bought for my perfume, Oud Luwak, and the conditions that the cats are kept in are just incredible and amazing when we saw the cages when we heard about the, the food that the cats eat we've been literally surprised so we find it very ethical and uh, you know very pleased with how, with the way they do it so we have no fear and no fear whatsoever that it's done ethically and in a very very nice way so we use this coffee to extract the essence and to use I used it in one of my perfumes then comes the deer mask since I launched the Siberian mask I faced a lot of uh, you know inquiries from people who are concerned and uh, sometimes even angry that we use such ingredient because it's endangered species and uh, it's illegal all around the world but the fact is that in Siberia government still allow for certain number of hunters to hunt for a deer and it's done for various reasons and then the meat of the deer is used the flesh of the deer is also used and the musk pot is also taken and it's used and a single must put from a single deer, deer can provide us with 100 bottles or even more than 100 bottles of perfume. So we find it very ethical and it is legal in a particular area from where we source it from. So we 
always try to maintain this and source our deer mask only from illegally registered hunters that use deer flesh, deer meat, and also the deer mask pots that we can then use in our perfume. Someone asked about deer mask absolute and what it is and how it's been made. Well, it is a very unique extract that's been made for me, uh, custom made for me in Russia. I believe it's the very first and maybe the only one attempt of making deer mask absolute in uh, Russia. One of the perfume gurus uh, made it for me upon my request, so I arranged grains to be sent to him and he used some of the very special solvents in order to extract the essence from the deer musk grains. The extract came a very unusual pink color, very thick in consistency and it was extremely potent. So then I managed to, to get it and use it in the one of my compositions. I believe it was uh, Malik al -Taif. One of Peter's subscribers is asking regarding synthetic oats versus natural oats. What is the difference and what I think about these two type of oats. So obviously as a distiller I have a huge and a very deep love for natural agarwood oil. As I said now, it's very tough, very difficult and very expensive to distill high quality wild agarwood oil. However, we will try to, to continue. In terms of synthetic oats, we must not underestimate synthetic oats because as any synthetic ingredients, synthetic oat might cost $20 per kilo, it can cost $1,000. 2000 or even more and the price of it can come very close to some of the natural oats so if the oat is natural doesn't mean it's good and it's better than synthetic oat some of the synthetic oats might serve the purpose in a particular composition much better than some of the natural oats so it really depends how you look at it. But when you smell a high quality, wild, natural agarwood oil, you will understand that it is not comparable to even the highest quality synthetic wood. So depends how you look at it and what grades are you examining. So if you smell some of the cheap plantation agarwood oils, they might smell very linear and very boring, and they might not serve the purpose in the composition, in a perfume. They might be easily lost among other ingredients. Where synthetic oil can give you what you need in terms of the performance, in terms of the particular note that you're trying to capture, whether it is an animalic note, a leathery note, a fruity type of note, or some smokiness that you want to have in your perfume. Synthetics are very useful for this reason. However, we at Arish de Doré, until today, never used any synthetic wood in our compositions. I will consider it a shame as a, as a distiller who produce agarwood oils and most the oats I produced myself that I use in my perfumes all sourced from my fellow uh, distillers so again if you compare it one by one and you examine it closely and you smell a good quality wild natural natural agarwood oil none of the synthetic alternatives can match at this experience. Another question was regarding my perfume, perfumer 
skills. Where did I study? How I learned it? So I can tell you that I'm 100% self-taught perfumer apart from my beautiful friends who shared a lot of secrets, a lot of tricks and tips with me. So it's all started when my beautiful friend uh, Taha Saeed from Agar Aura uh, taught me how to distill agar wood and step by step I followed his advice and I made my first agar wood oils with uh, brother Dmitri we distilled old Ketsani and old Abu Tai according to my friend Taha advice and also the, my good friend Majid Eterji from Saudi Arabia, he was also guiding me in terms of a distillation process. So I'd love to thank these two people for teaching me a lot and for really making it possible for me to distill agarwood. And then the following ingredients that we distilled, such as different flowers, sandalwood, and etc. So, in terms of skills as a perfumer, here I must thank my beloved friend Sultan Pasha. Once I planned and I decided to launch my first perfume, Siberian Musk, Ottoman Empire, and Uzen, I took a lot of advice from him, and he also guided me through this very, very tough and difficult process. So thank you, Sultan. Without you, it would never happen. Finally, one of the subscribers asking about our future, where we are heading, are we going to release any atars, are we going to release any incense with the smell of our perfume? First of all, a big surprise to all of you, we just launched a new release which consists of three atoms. However, it's not new compositions, all of them been released before. So one of them is a beautiful Vanima Atom that we presented in the past in this beautiful crystal bottle. We relaunch it. This time, as we promised, but it will come in a more simple presentation and therefore will become more affordable for people. The second atom that will be launched and is already launched is Russian Oud. Many people have called it the best Oud of the best Oud perfume of 2018. And we're really, really excited and happy to present you the, the stronger, the deeper, the more dense, more intense version of it, which is exactly the same formula, but in Atar concentration. It's a pure oil concentration with the traces of alcohol that are necessary in order for me to extract some of the materials. So there are traces of alcohol, but they are very, very small. Another beautiful atar that we're going to present you is uh, Russian musk. Many people enjoyed Russian musk. It was my successful attempt to make a high quality version of Siberian musk. I used a high quality sandalwood, uh, different types of neroli of a higher quality. I used a higher quality agarwood oil in this composition. I used a lot of citruses and pine in the top notes. So I really believe that I achieved something that I wanted and quite a few people appreciate it and they really think it's a very very nice perfume. So again we are very pleased, happy and excited to offer you the stronger concentration Russian musk in a atar oil form. And both of them, Russian oud, Russian musk and also the Valima, the third one, all of them are exactly from the same batch. Before I diluted my 
Russian wood and Russian masking to extract the parfum that now already sold out, I decided to decant a small portion of pure attar in order to offer you this experience in the future. That's all for today. Thank you very much, Peter, for having me. It was a great pleasure to have this small chat and I truly hope it will be beneficial for all the oud, atar and perfume lovers from all around the world. Thank you very much.